Sandra here from New Vintage, newvintage.com.au. I wanted to just share this video with you because I get quite often, quite often I get asked about what am I going to do when 6, 12, 18 months down the track I decide that I don't like the painted colour that I've done. With Fusion Mineral Paint it is a super easy solution because all you need to do is give it a clean and you can literally paint straight over it. So this is painted in our Fusion Mineral Paint Damask and I actually sealed it with an oil wax. Now once that oil wax is cured after about 10, 14 days, you're fine to paint straight over it if you change your mind with the colour. But if you've sealed it with a beeswax, you will need to remove that beeswax with a terps or um, a mineral spirit. Something just to take the edge of that beeswax otherwise just like water and oil your water-based fusion mineral paint isn't going to stick to the beeswax so I've given these a really good clean and I'm ready to literally paint straight over them I have enjoyed them being this color but I also am a huge lover of changing things up the best thing with our fusion mineral paint is that the paint is self-leveling so it won't look like it's had 10 layers of paint put on it. Not like an acrylic that builds up. The paint is self-leveling, so just like this coffee table, our coffee table under here, that's seven layers of paint on there. You can't tell. The paint just levels beautifully, it doesn't build up. And as you'll see, between the good quality paint, so this is my Fusion Mineral Paint, I'm using the colour Soapstone and a good quality brush, mine is three years old, it still works but it's a little bit hammered, uh, the Klingon brushes. Between the paint and the brush the work is done for you. It really is as simple as applying your paint and letting it dry. The curing time for fusion mineral paint, the time it takes for the paint to harden, you want to be gentle with it for about 10 days and just like all paints, it takes a full 21 days to cure. So just be aware of that. But if you've done the right amount of prep, particularly a really good thorough clean, removed any of that grease and grime that's on there from fingerprints, moisturizing creams, things like that, the paint will stick and adhere beautifully. Now I'm going to paint these ones fully in soapstone. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do a dry brush which I'm super excited about. I actually did this process in our most recent how to paint your furniture workshop. I was demonstrating how to do a dry brush and this is the exact two colors that I used and I was so excited, instantly motivated and I knew that's what I need to do on my bedside tables. I really enjoyed the pink, but I'm ready for a change. And I'd rather change it with a coat of paint than actually go buy a brand new bedside. There's nothing wrong with these, they're absolutely beautiful. They suit our bedroom and they're really solid. So why would I go buy new ones when I can just give them a lick of paint and they'll look brand new all over again. Okay, so I went ahead and I painted the rest of the bedside in our Fusion Mineral Paint Soapstone. It's a beautiful blue-grey. Now, as you can see, it's, it's painted and it looks okay, but I just feel like these details need to have a little bit more, I don't know, they just need to stand out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry brush just over these details and you'll see how it really makes them pop and it just makes it so much more, um, just gives it more character. 
So as the name suggests, when you're dry brushing, you want almost no paint whatsoever on your brush. Your brush is dry. So I'm using our small Klingon, which is the R14, perfect for little crafty activities. Um, these are available on the website, newvintage.com.au. And I just like to take a little bit from the lid. So this is the colour putty. Just pop a little bit on my brush, paper towel, and remove all that excess paint. The thing is with dry brushing is you can always build it up. So if it's not too heavy to start with, just slowly, slowly build it up. If you happen to go heavy handed and you're not happy with it, wait for it to dry and just paint over it with your base colour, which here is our soapstone. Okay, so I already tell I've got too much paint on my brush. See how much I've taken off? All right, and you just kind of whisper along the edges. And any raised detail will pick up the paint that is on your brush. So I'm hardly even touching the surface at all. Any imperfections in the material, in the timber or in your paint will be picked up. See how it's really starting to pop there? Can you see that? So it's kind of like a reverse distress. Instead of distressing and have um, having the colour underneath coming through, which in this case would have been the pink, which I really don't want. I don't want the pink coming through. But if it was a rich timber, I could have distressed back and shown the rich timber. But I actually just wanted to lighten up the whole piece a little bit. Now you saw there's no paint on my brush and see how much it's picking up. And you can just keep building it up. Doesn't it look amazing? Already it looks awesome.